Sitting within the city limits of Pine Bluff, Arkansas sits a relic of the past. At one point in history, this locomotive ran excursion trains all across Arkansas and Texas over the Cotton Belt Railroad. St. Louis Southwestern number 819 used to be the poster girl for excursions in the southwestern United States. Despite being out of service and likely never running again, the engine's colorful history and journey back to steam are worth talking about. Welcome to the bright history of the 819. As a subsidiary of the Southern Pacific, the St. Louis Southwestern Railroad was a sizable railroad in its own right. During World War II, the railroad was looking for more power for their freight trains across the Cotton Belt. In early 1943, the railroad sent a petition to the War Production Board to purchase brand spanking new EMD FT diesel engines. While the request was denied, the War Production Board granted the railroad permission to build five new L1484 locomotives, numbers 815 through 819. The last one to be constructed was our Southwestern Queen, St. Louis Southwestern number 819, built on February 8, 1943 in the Pine Bluff shops in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. The boiler was originally manufactured by the Baldwin Locomotive Works of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and shipped to Pine Bluff with everything else for the locomotive made in shop. Number 819 was the very last steam locomotive built for the Cotton Belt and along with the entire state of Arkansas with a final cost to construct of $143,607 or $2.3 million today. The 819 and the rest of her class bore a striking resemblance to the Southern Pacific's GS-1 locomotives. These 484 started construction in 1930 and were the template locomotives for the later Southern Pacific GS-2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, and 6s. The L1s, however, were an upgrade from the GS-1 with more steam advancements with the locomotives being dressed up a little bit differently as well. The oil-burning 819, primed with a St. Louis Southwestern shop-built Long Bell 3 chime, was fired up at 2.22 p.m. and left the Pine Bluff shops on February 8, 1943. Little did the builders know that they had just churned out one of the most famous steam locomotives of the Southwest. Once out of the shops, 819 was pressed into service to relieve the Cotton Belt's Baldwin 280s and even earlier L1 Northerns dating back to the 1930s. With freight trains regularly at over 100 cars, 819 could handle the heavy loads all across the system of the Cotton Belt route. She diligently ran across the railroad for a little over a decade, but while the glory and the charm of the locomotive made her a proud member of the St. Louis Southwestern Railroad, dieselization started to occur in the U.S. as early as the 1940s. The St. Louis Southwestern was no exception. This meant that just a decade after 819 was built, her career all came crashing down. While the locomotive was a masterpiece of homegrown steam power, the Cotton Belt started converting to diesel locomotives by the mid-1940s. By the start of 1950, number 819's useful days were numbered. In mid-1955, the locomotive was subsequently retired from service on the Cotton Belt and placed in storage after a hearty 10 and a half years of service and 804,000 miles of revenue service. But the engine was saved by the railroad's management, wanting to preserve the last home-built steam locomotive of the Cotton Belt. On July 19, 1955, the railroad's president, Harold J. McKenzie, presented the retired locomotive to the city of Pine Bluff, Arkansas. The gift was meant to show the railroad's gratitude that the city played in the era of steam. McKenzie's wish was that the people of Pine Bluff would display her in a public park. Until a park could take the engine, she sat in storage, safe from the cutter's torch, with the railroad needing to find a retirement home for the engine. 
With 819 destined to be preserved, the railroad needed to get the locomotive to a public park to be put on display. But the cost to move the engine was higher than expected. To raise funds, the city sold shares of the locomotive to school children in Jefferson County. Each share cost a penny. The number of shares correlated to the weight of the engine. Each penny cost a pound of the engine. When the transaction was done, the kids would get a letter as a certification signed by the mayor of Pine Bluff. The city would need $4,000 to pay for concrete, metal, and pipe-based shed and fence for the locomotive's home. However, by 1959, there was a problem. While in the city's ownership, Pine Bluff neglected 819 greatly. When the railroad donated the engine to the city, one of the conditions was that the city must take care of it. Well, they didn't really take good care of her. The 819 was then immediately worked on in 1959, taking most of the year to get the engine restored. In addition, the final spot was also picked. It was Oakland Park, west of the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. However, the biggest problem was trying to move the engine to the park in the first place. The railroad, however, decided to step in and lend materials for the temporary track to be constructed. Cotton Belt and strangely Missouri Pacific employees helped lay down the track. After years of setbacks, 819 was finally ready to settle down. Unfortunately, more shenanigans were on the way for the 819. During her move between Townsend and Oakland Park, the rope holding the locomotive snapped and she rolled down the temporary track and stopped after she slammed into a large black oak tree. The locomotive after the impact had slightly derailed and crews the next day had to rerail the engine. Afterward, the engine was then finally put into her spot at the park in the fall of 1960. However, it would take several more years to erect an overhead shed to protect the locomotive. The shed was made possible by several donations with each contribution ranging between $250 and $500. An engineer at International Paper named Gene Gardner designed the shed while other organizations helped build it. It took until 1965 until the fence and the shed were finally finished. The mayor shared one of the two keys to the gate of number 819 with longtime rail fan James Norris. His father was the very first engineer for number 819 when she was taken out of the Pine Bluff shops in 1943. James had always remembered his late father driving the historic locomotive. Despite his failing health, he would visit the locomotive every week to either get the bird's nest off the engine or replace the shattered glass inside the cab. On Sundays, he would open the gate for kids to ring the bell of the engine and answer questions about the 819. Norris would later say in regards to the locomotive, Every time I come out here, I can see my daddy standing on that step. It kinda gets down in your heart. Norris continued to visit the locomotive until 1965, when his failing health forced him away from the engine. Norris sadly passed away in 1970, and with nobody maintaining the engine, she quickly started to deteriorate. By 1983, she was covered in graffiti and many parts of the locomotive were missing. Many residents thus started to speak up. Sally Perdue, a resident of Pine Bluff, complained about the engine's horrid condition. She stated that, It had been abandoned and stripped of all its dignity. It has become the iron horse that was put out to pasture, neglected, and abused. Her family had long-time ties to the St. Louis Southwestern, and she agreed to take a seat on a subcommittee at the Chamber of Commerce's Publicity and Tourism Department to get the 819 restored and relocated, seeing that Oakland Park was an unfit option for the engine. Sally sensed that a lot of potential volunteers, mainly retired cotton belt craftsmen and engineers, would be curious in working to restore the 819. The superintendent of the Cotton Belt Pine Bluff Division, R. R. McClellahan, was in on the project and worked hard with the railroad to get the locomotive hauled from the park and back to the shops. The face of Pine Bluff 
would now have a chance to steam again. 1983 was the year that number 819's future would take a turn for the better. The Cotton Belt Rail Historical Society was formed in 1983 to restore and operate 819. While the city still owned the locomotive, the group was responsible for its condition and operations. Plans were made to restore the locomotive in the very same shops that she was built, the Pine Bluff shops in its namesake town. On October 1st, between 50 and 100 employees of the St. Louis Southwestern and many rail fans assisted with moving the engine out of the park. The engine was moved three and a half miles to the Pine Bluff shops. The Arkansas Railroad Museum and the Cotton Belt Rail Historical Society worked to get the 40-year-old locomotive up and running once more under the name Project 819. After the two societies paid the Cotton Belt to lease space in the Pine Bluff shops, work was initiated. With the projection for the locomotive's restoration being 18 to 24 months, that meant that the crew needed to find many of the original parts for the locomotive that was stolen while the engine was on display. Jay Cromer, the president of the CBRHS, offered a no questions asked policy when people came forward and gave parts back to the group. Many parts like the emblem on one of the pistons and the original whistle did came back. The bell, however, was never recovered. The group thus had to use a bell from another 800 Cotton Bell L1 that was used at a local Methodist church. Working for 6 days a week, the project was running along smoothly, and the engine was starting to shape up. 36 months later, a hiss echoed in the shops once more. April 6th of 1986 was when the locomotive was born again. The smell of bunker oil and water vapors permeated the air. The feel of the excitement of the volunteers was in the air as the locomotive's wheels turned with steam hissing from the cylinders. Number 819 was moving again. The crowd cheered and celebrated as the locomotive's nose appeared from the shops and slowly moseyed her way into the glistening sunlight of the southwest. After 35,000 hours of grit, determination, and passion, number 819 was once again under steam. 20 days later, the newly restored 819 took her first excursion train from Pine Bluff to Fortis, Arkansas and back with people gathering along the tracks to watch the train thunder by. But that was only the beginning of the locomotive's excursion life. In the ensuing decade, the locomotive would run even more trips on the Cotton Belt. 1986 saw her run to Little Rock, Arkansas for the 150th anniversary of Arkansas statehood. Pine Bluff's mayor, Louis Ramsey, rode behind the locomotive from Pine Bluff to Little Rock in the Cotton Belt's private passenger car, the Houston with Hillary Clinton. Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton rode the train the last few miles from Barton Coliseum to Little Rock Union Station. At the station, 819 sat on display for the weekend before returning to Pine Bluff. In the summer of 1986, 819 appeared in a motion picture film for the first time when she was filmed in End of the Line along with many other volunteers of Project 819 and 35 Pine Bluff residents. The executive producer of the film and native of Arkansas, Mary Steenbergen, had pulled some strings with the CBRHS to let them use 819 for the film. After the film shoot, 819 participated in more exciting and memorable excursions. Two years after the locomotive traveled to Fortis in April 1988, the engine was scheduled to go to the National Railway Historical Society Convention in St. Louis, Missouri in June of 1990. She was prepped for the journey from Arkansas to Missouri and left Pine Bluff on June 12th.
After arriving in St. Louis, she sat on display for several days alongside Frisco 1522, Norfolk and Western 1218, and Union Pacific 844. This would be the peak of 819's excursion career. After a week at Union Station, she headed back to Pine Bluff for another round of excursions in the next few years. In the early 1990s, the locomotive didn't perform any massive excursions, but did perform smaller ones. In October of 1992, she took her final excursion of the year from Pine Bluff to Tyler, Texas and back. However, it would be her last excursion ever. Just two years later, in 1994, the Cotton Belt merged with its longtime parent company Southern Pacific, and in 1996, SP and Union Pacific merged. 819 was last fired up in 1994, but never ran outside the Cotton Belt shops because of Union Pacific's no foreign steam policy, where unless a locomotive was built for the UP, it was not allowed to operate on active UP-owned trackage. Since 819 was never associated with the railroad, she could no longer pull trips on the main line. She was consequently forced to miss out on special events where some expected her to participate, such as the 2001 NRHS Convention in St. Louis and the 2002 NRHS Convention on the Grand Canyon Railway in Williams, Arizona. The locomotive instead spent the remainder of her time at the Pine Bluff shops, now turned into the Arkansas Railroad Museum with an uncertain future ahead of her. 819 ended up being in storage for quite some time in its life at the museum. All she did was sit at the museum without turning a wheel and waited for an FRA mandated 15 year rebuild. During her retirement, she was listed on the National Register of Historic Places on May 18, 2003. However, around the early 2010s, the Arkansas Railroad Museum attempted to restore the engine to operating condition. The museum was raising funds for a boiler ultrasound test and some other smaller work. However, when the locomotive was still dormant, the state of Arkansas recognized the engine's historic value and moved to solidify the engine as an Arkansinian legend. In March of 2021, the state legislator passed a bill making the 819 the official state steam locomotive, making it only one of a few in the country to receive such a designation. But the locomotive's potential return to steam would grind to a halt in April of 2021. On April 27, 2021, the museum announced on Facebook that 819's restoration was officially cancelled, citing their lost access to mainline rails and the money that was going to 819 being diverted to emergency repairs on the Pine Bluff shops. With that, St. Louis Southwestern number 819's excursion career had officially ended in a very sad and disheartening end for all involved. The story of Cotton Belt 819 is one of perseverance to restore something that many were passionate about. The locomotive was a fan favorite in the Southwest United States and was a truly stunning locomotive. What we can take away from the story of the 819 is how anyone can rally behind a cause to restore a piece of local history. We all owe a big thanks to Harold McKenzie, Sally Perdue, and all of the members of the Missouri Pacific, St. Louis Southwestern, and the Cotton Belt Rail Historical Society as well as the City of Pine Bluff for rallying around to get the locomotive up and running again in the first place. Despite the engine being retired once more, her legacy will continue to live on. In the words of John Reed, a writer in the Baxter Bulletin, Cotton Belt Steam Locomotive 819 was once king of the rails.